we've been looking at our residential project using a site that has very simplified contours that I felt would be easier to work with, with basic SketchUp skills. Uh, they're flat, so you can push-pull them a little more easily. However, now that we are moving into the render phase, we need to think about what's the best way to proceed and develop our model in greater detail. Now, first of all, I'm just going to launch this model into Lumion, and what you'll see is that the model itself is actually a little, a little sunken into the ground. And uh, this is just because of where the origin is in our model. Uh, we can pull this right up uh, just by dragging the model up, and you'll, you'll see those contours that I was talking about. And uh, we can do a number of things here in Lumion. Uh, there's basically two approaches. We could use Lumion landscape features to try to build out the site, or we could use SketchUp. Now, it's kind of a toss-up because Lumion landscape features are quite easy to use. Uh, however, getting things like roads and patios, things with hard edges, are much easier to do in SketchUp. It does appear to me that the model uh, examples provided by Lumion most of those that have roads, the roads were created in whatever the originating program was and not in Lumion. It's just not possible to do roads very precisely. Now, our site it can be quite rural and we, we don't have to have asphalt roads and you don't have to have paved patios. So let's start with using Lumion to create the landscape. So to use the Lumion tools, uh, let's push this landscape back down under underground here. And then we're basically going to uh, push the Lumion landscape so that it matches the contours that we've created in this uh, kind of massing model. And those landscape tools should be fairly familiar. You click on the height tool and you use the up or down tool. I'm going to use the down one. Uh, and of course, you want to change the size of the brush. And, and I'm a little, a little aggressive with my mouse, so I, I'm going to turn the brush speed way down so that I don't accidentally uh, move too far. But then you can, after a little bit of effort, you can kind of push the site down until you see the contours and see how they're starting to appear now. And we can keep going with this uh, until we expose the site uh, without uh, kind of totally going above it. And I just fast forwarded to having completed that a little bit. And you can see here that the uh, Lumion contours are kind of poking up above the uh, existing contours that I showed here on our existing model. And then you can just turn off those contours using the tags in SketchUp. Now I don't have mine on, so let's uh, go to the default tray, show my tray. I, I just don't have a lot of space on my screen. It gets kind of small to have all these things open. Uh, but here if you go the existing site contours, if you just turn them off, now you have a nice clean landscape and it's a somewhat uh, craggly landscape, but you can see that it is pretty close to the existing landscape and the change in elevation. And once here, you can come in and add all the landscape features that your heart desires, and it's quite easy to uh, push-pull and paint the landscape. The only thing is you can't get those nice, precise roads that we want to have. So to get the precise roads, we have to try a different tack, and that is using the landscape features in SketchUp. So SketchUp natively has a way to show the landscape forms, uh, the kind of geomorphology of the area um, on board by just uh, using geolocation. So I'm going to turn off these existing site contours, and it's pretty easy. You just go to File, Geolocation, and then Add Location. Now I have zoomed around to get to our actual site, and uh, we can select a region here. We can just go to select region and you can, you can choose it in any different number of different ways. Whoa, uh, click to size that. And then when you click import, what it will do is bring this image, the satellite image, but also the, some estimate of the landforms here. Now, we could absolutely use the digital globe model, but uh, unfortunately you have to pay for the higher resolution models and, and I don't feel like doing that. And Bing seems adequate for our needs here. So I'll click import. 
And what you'll see when you have imported is that it has brought in a big flat picture of our site. Not really all that exciting for us. However, uh, what you'll see, this is called the location snapshot here in the tags. It created a new tag for that. Uh, but now if I turn on location terrain, you'll see that the snapshot has been warped to uh, approximate what Bing seems to think the landforms are. And, and I think they're, they're pretty close. Uh, I'm going to view this model. I have my uh, views menu up here. I'm just going to make it monochrome so you can kind of get a better sense of the, the uh, crenellations and knobbiness of the site there. You can see that it, it, it probably fairly accurately captures the geology uh, and the shape of the site. Now, because our model is uh, slightly off axis because of the way I set it up, which was probably not the best way to set it up. Uh, we don't want to use the onboard geolocation feature. I've actually already done that and uh, added a few things uh, into a file that you can just import into your project here. And I called it Smooth Contours. Uh, and what I did is I rotated it to match our site and I also allowed uh, the, I broke up some of the areas because one of the problems we have is when we get to Lumion, we can't paint the road a different color unless it's a separate area here in SketchUp. So you need to be able to select these pieces as separate, uh, separate uh, objects here. See how I can paint them individually. Uh, and that will allow you to uh, uh, change the existing site to something other than asphalt, which would be a good idea, uh, easily in Lumion. Now we have this lovely site in our project, but how are we going to be able to manipulate it? Well, first of all, uh, I'm going to turn off the existing site contours. And also the model that I imported, it's a, a SketchUp family, right, or a component, I'm going to just explode that, just right click on it and choose explode. Uh, what does this do? It allows us to use my favorite tools, the sandbox tools. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to do is draw out any elements that you want to transfer to the site. Uh, draw them as flat uh, kind of shapes, rectangles. Now, uh, you may find that you need to trace over the existing site. Uh, and you can do that easily. Just turn back on the where, wherever you drew the existing site and uh, trace over that. Uh, I made a separate tag here for the architectural features on the landscape. Um, and you can also, if you have the uh, terrain on and you want to see both at the same time, there is a handy dandy uh, x-ray mode. This is on the styles toolbar. Uh, you can also get there under view face style x-ray. Uh, and that's a nice way to see through objects uh, in case one thing is you know, trees or other elements are blocking what you're trying to draw. Either way, I uh, sketched out uh, some elements. The building footprint, I think, is a square or square -ish. I just traced the bottom of the building. Uh, I drew kind of a giant patio area and then a weird squiggly thing that I, I don't honestly I don't honestly know what it is. And I'm going to turn off the existing contours. And conveniently, I also have my existing building on, or my designed building on a tag. Uh, I would strongly recommend taking advantage of tags to control visibility as they obviously make it quite quick for something like this. So let's start with the first method of transferring geometry. Uh, and basically what you do, you can select your lines that you've drawn flat and there's a tool called the drape tool and that allows you to just basically apply those lines to the landscape. I'll just click on the landscape. You'll see the lines show up. Uh, maybe I'll paint this so you can see them a little better. Maybe that doesn't help as much as I, uh, as I thought, but anyway, okay. So that's the first method. The other method is actually kind of a little more dramatic. Um, it allows you to take a shape and actually stamp it onto the site with kind of a, kind of a push pull feature. Again, select the shape, uh, click on the site. Now, uh, by the way, there is an offset uh, value. Uh, I'm going to start with one foot on that. And uh, that's the, the default value. Uh, anyway, so uh, select the, if you haven't selected it already, select the shape, 
but then select the site that you want it to go on and you see how immediately it's kind of it's kind of stretching the site uh, based on the the contours that it finds um, and if, if it's not working for you you may have forgotten to explode the site it doesn't work on components it only works on groups um, and probably the best thing to do, I have a one foot offset here. That'll allow my foundation walls to kind of squeeze in here. Um, you can place this uh, down low if you want to just drop the whole building in. Um, once it's in, uh, it is part of this geometry of the building. So you, you can manipulate it a little more uh, and see how the shapes warp. Um, if it's kind of flat up and down, you, you may want to erase all these uh, interior walls. And, and by the way, I am basing this off of a, a video that I saw by Justin Geis. And his videos are absolutely the best. Um, and he has a bunch on using sandbox tools and doing exactly what we're doing here. Uh, he also is an expert at plugins. And these extensions are, are so powerful for creating kind of specialty shapes and objects. But for us, we're just going to use some, some real basic uh, tools that are native to SketchUp and maybe one or two extensions because I just can't resist. So uh, we've uh, made our kind of foundation here. Uh, what if we want something kind of like a projecting uh, a landing or, or something like that? Um, I'm going to take this shape. And uh, I'm going to use the same uh, tool, the stamp tool. However, I'm going to give the offset something much wider, maybe 10 feet, to really dramatize it. Now, there is a quirk, which is sometimes it doesn't take that offset right away. So, so uh, click off of the tool. I'll just click on the other tool. But then I'll, I'll go back to the stamp tool. Uh, and now you see the offset has taken. I, I don't know if it's just me or... Or what? Anyway, click on the outline of the shape you want, and that red line indicates the offset you're going to get. And now, when you click on the site, you see how it, it kind of um, uh, it kind of warps the site. And this is great if you if you don't want kind of a sharp fall off, uh, which would be typical of say a large area um, that uh, is graded rather than having. A, retaining wall. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to eye it as far as getting it aligned just right. I, I suppose I could try snapping to some height if I knew I had a height um, already kind of anchored in the model. So that's how you can modify the terrain. I would also uh, recommend in advance painting these here in SketchUp. It actually doesn't really matter what you paint them, but as long as you paint them different materials. So for example, if I want this squiggly area to be, I don't know what, some kind of flower bed, uh, and maybe this area to be, I don't know, uh, some kind of patio, as long as they're painted a different color from others in the model, uh, those will be modifiable in. One last thing to note about materials. First of all, when I brought this landscape uh, contours, this terrain in from the geolocation feature, uh, I did have to unlock it. You can just uh, right click on it. Right now it's unlocked, but uh, I can lock it. But you can unlock it uh, and that will allow you to make changes. And I, I drew in the road for us already. You will want to make sure if you want to paint the road some different material, you have to come in and paint it here in SketchUp first. Double click on the uh, terrain and use your paint bucket and you can you can paint it any, any material you like. Uh, but uh, use a material that's different than what else you've used in your model. And sometimes it does get a little tricky to figure out what that is. Uh, and the reason is this background uh, image is actually a texture here in the model. So the road, if I change this and paint it, say, green uh, for grass in Lumion, it's going to come out and paint the road green also. So you, you have to pre-paint those. Also, remember not to paint the component um, or group, actually, um, on the outside. If, if I select the group, I should see that the material is the default material here in SketchUp. Uh, in fact, you can double click on it and choose a different material or just choose the default material. Um, it's very tempting to come in and paint it. Uh, and what you'll see if you paint the outside, it doesn't look any different here, but sometimes you'll find unpredictable material behavior when you get into Lumion. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to do anything with extensions, but I just can't resist. There's so many cool ones, and especially when working with the landscape, there are a lot of freeform shapes that are just a little tricky to draw. 
Uh, the first one is actually for drawing on flat surfaces, the Bezier toolbar. I made myself a little handy dandy flat surface here. Uh, and this has great draw, uh, drawing tools for essentially splines, curvy things. Um, let's say I wanted to draw, I don't know, a pond shape. Um, and as we know, this can be done in, using Lumion landscape tools, but how do you do it if you don't have those, uh, which we don't if we're using the SketchUp model. Uh, and I can even tell it, uh, close the loop nicely. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. And then we can uh, done, uh, be done here. And now I have a surface that I can, that I can paint a material. Uh, and I can transfer this outline back down to our site using our sandbox tools. And uh, you, I just erased the uh, edges here, and then I'll use that uh, drape tool that we used before. Click on the object that you want to drape, and then the site, and like magic, it should transfer over. And uh, like, you know, like before, we can, we can paint bucket that, something, um, or uh, if you prefer, you can use the uh, Lumion tools uh, and, and make this a, a, pre, uh, a recess onto the site and get yourself a nice little uh, fancy water feature. Okay, what if you want to draw right on a contoured surface, one that's all warpy? Well, guess what? There's a an extension. Uh, this one from the Sketchucation website. It's called Tools on Surface, and uh, this allows you to draw on shapes that are all warpy, uh, and, and you know all the the warpiness that we we can't see. Um, you, it's actually quite difficult to draw because each of these individual triangles is flat, but what if we wanted to draw a circle or a square that, that went across several of these? That's, that's quite difficult. So the way this one works, uh, again, you just uh, enter your landscape. So you have to double click on it to edit it, but then you can draw a shape. So let's say I wanted uh, some kind of wall. I can uh, draw this and, and, and it has all sorts of parameters on how it draws things, but you can see this, this wall is actually on the site now. It's a separate object that I can shape. I don't believe you can push pull it because it is not flat. However, that brings me to my next tool, which is also from the Sketchcation website. This is the Frito 6 Joint Push Pull tool. A great tool, and basically it allows you to push pull things that are not flat. And uh, this is great for doing landscape forms. Now I could make this say a wall, uh, maybe you know paint it some other color. And when I get to Lumion, I'll be able to manipulate this uh, as a unique material. Uh, obviously, that's a really great option when you want the wall to say the same height but follow the landscape contours. Those are kind of the three uh, simplest extensions. There are so many for doing things like drawing roads um, and uh, making objects that follow complex contours, but these, these are the basic ones. So back here in Lumion, as we've seen before, uh, sometimes the imported model, the, the kind of Z location does not match uh, the Lumion Z location. So you move the model up and down and, and the boundaries of the model, you can decide to kind of sink it into the Lumion landscape if you know that you're going to be doing some further manipulation to these areas. In our case, we've, we've grabbed you know, pretty much the whole area that we need for our project. So no need to uh, sink it down. But if you're just doing, say, one building sitting on a plot, a small plot, then, then using the Lumion landscape tools uh, is much easier for kind of the background area. And you can go and build up your site any which way that you want. Obviously, materials is a fun thing to do. Because we have painted these surfaces differently, you should see that each individual one is manipulable, changeable. Um, and then you'll find that other areas may ha have uh, somewhat uh, odd uh, selection. Uh, for instance, you see how it, it's, it has these as kind of big squares, and that has to do with how the image was downloaded off of uh, the internet from Bing uh, using the geolocation feature. It kind of gets these quadrants, uh, which kind of have a legacy here as individual images. And as you build out the model, of course, you may find that certain surfaces won't paint um, or they don't paint predictably, or you, you know, you want to design, redesign them. Of course, you're going to want to change the SketchUp model in the original. I would also encourage you to use, when you're adding things like nature, uh, use 
uh, things that will help you to build out the model quickly. In this case, we just have a forest in the background. We should be able to grab clusters of trees. Uh, pine trees look good, and you can pick ones that, that look like what you want. Uh, but by adding these in in the background here, and this is probably a little low, but you, we can pretty quickly generate uh, some background information. Now, in our case, we, we actually don't care too much what the background trees are, but in the, um, uh, so these are, these are probably fine. However, for trees in the foreground, you are going to want to use the high quality trees that are, are going to look really nice. Um, the background trees are obviously going to just fill in, but, but anything in the foreground, you're going to want to use the highest resolution. Uh, you can also do things like add in fun stuff like, like weeds in the grass. And this is the one bummer about using Lumion, uh, but not using the Lumion landscape features, is that you can't use the paint feature, which is kind of nice, gives a little bit of randomness to it when you add things like weeds or other bizarre things like flowers. Um, but we can still use the mass placement feature here. For example, if I want to put some flowers in front of this wall, um, I can click on the mass placement feature and uh, here, let's uh, add in, I guess we can add in some daisies and some other flowers. And, and of course, you can, you can make it a formal garden or you can have kind of a, a random uh, setting here. Let's get rid of the, uh, the dandelions. I don't want any dandelions growing in my project. Uh, anyway, and we can just click and drag a line and add in a whole bunch of flowers and and there you go, much easier than actually digging in the garden. And, and of course, you can you can add all the randomization features, which which really um, help to make it look so realistic. And I would encourage you to explore all these different uh, object types that there are in the landscape. It's really uh, kind of a, an endlessly fun thing to go and look. I mean, there's even things like rocks that you can go and examine. I know one or two of you were using the glacial erratics that occur on the site. You can actually just place those guys right in here and uh, they look quite dramatic. Now, I don't forget my image here is a low resolution because I have my settings fairly low so that my computer doesn't explode. Um, but when we render, you'll see these should look much nicer. And by the way, when you have all these objects, we, we frequently have a lot of different types of things in a landscape. Um, you can select individual objects. Remember, they are selected by category. So usually it's fairly clear, like a tree is a tree. However, apparently, according to Lumion, a rock is a tree also. Uh, so you have to be careful and try to remember where you got the objects. Um, once you have one of them selected, there are some fun tools uh, if you want to swap them out. For example, you can select all identical objects. This is, this is great if I want to like get rid of the dandelions and add... Uh, bluebells or something like that to my lawn. You can pretty quickly do it. Um, there is a replace the selection and it will allow you to kind of jump into um, uh, into the back into the library and change them. Finally, one last uh, element that you can add here in Lumion are these uh, road markings. I'm, I'm here in the effects area uh, and there's a decals area and this is great for adding things like dirt and scuffing and making your models a little richer, but um, the, uh, lands, uh, the road markings are, are kind of fun. Obviously they're in metric, so some of the speed ones aren't going to work, but uh, things like lines uh, for crosswalks um, or just a line in the center of the road. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to place millions of these. You, you have to kind of do them one by one, which is annoying. Um, each one can be manipulated uh, individually, uh, I can also, like I said, select all identical objects, um, and you can even space them evenly from each other. However, um, you can't always get it to work quite the way you, uh, you wanted to. See, I clicked a line rotation and it rotated it off uh, off the uh, the axis that I was hoping for. Let's try uh, deselecting these objects. Maybe if I select this one and I rotate it in the direction that I'm hoping. By the way, the rotate tool, it's not a graphical rotate, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a 
tool down here, you just basically change the pitch and the orientation. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell what we're changing, but I'm, I'm going to stick with the way it is now. Now, if we try selecting all identical objects and orient the rotation, see how they, they all come together. So that's how you can create your landscape in SketchUp and use it in Lumion.